Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's Daryl here. It is not so bright and early anymore. It's 9 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, this is kind of an impromptu video. Um, like I've said this before, there's times where I remember something. You know, I'm, I'm coming up on 58 years old and I used for two, two and a half decades. And uh, I've been clean and sober now for over 17 years. And a lot of times I, I still remember stuff that it, that seems to have gotten pushed into the back of my head. And I just got back from uh, my regular daily three or four mile walk around here around town where I live. And I saw a person and I saw the way he was acting, the condition he was in this morning. And I, it, it kind of shocked me. Uh, you know, I, I was surprised by it. That I'll tell you guys in a second what I saw. And I kept walking. This just happened. And I wanted to make this video because all of a sudden this all came back to me. And uh, I've never told anybody this. And uh, all of a sudden I realized it, what was happening to this person that I just saw happened to me. It was one of the times, one of the last times I used, one of the last times I relapsed before I got clean and sober. It happened in the summer of 2006, over 17 years ago, before I before I got clean and sober. I believe it was even before I got into a uh, MAT, a uh, um, uh, med medicinal, uh, medically assisted treatment program or methadone program. Uh, and I want to tell you about that because I've never told anybody about this. And it's, it's bizarre. But once I saw this person this morning, I, I see how that was me. All right. Let me be more specific here and fill you in. I got to kind of watch what I say, you know, the, the specifics. Uh, I don't want to come across like I'm glamorizing or, you know, nostalgically remembering anything. The point of this video is recovery is possible. And not only that, but how close, how lucky I was that I made it into recovery. You know, you, you, you only get lucky so many times before your luck runs out. And uh, my luck was pretty close to running out. All right, so this morning, as I was walking, I'm pretty sure I saw this person before. It's a younger guy. And I did a video talking about this, this person nodding out. And uh, just he was just I, about um, two months ago. I, I think it was the same person I saw standing in a parking lot, just bent over from the waist, from the waist down, bent over standing in a, in a completely empty parking lot at like 6 a.m. in the morning, you know, just, I thought he was picking something up at first. And then he, he was just, and I realized, you know, he was nodding out. He was under the influence. And, uh, you know, I, I was, I was amazed that this, you know, this person could, could keep their balance. And after a, a couple of minutes, he stood up, you know, and he, he started walking again and it would happen again. So this morning, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was the same person, but I was walking down the street <clears throat> and uh, across on the other side of the street, I see somebody stopped and I keep walking and the person's just standing there. I, I don't know if they're waiting for a bus. So I'm not that close. And I get closer and the person's got a hood. He's got a heavy jacket on and he's just looking down and I can't see his face. But then I realize what's happening here. There's, you know, he, he just came to a stop walking down the sidewalk and I realize what's happening. He's just nodded out. You know, he's just in the middle of the sidewalk. You know, there's nobody else really on the street. And this is like the last time I saw if it was the same person. And he's just, you know, head down, oblivious to everything around him. And this is a busy, you know, lots of lots of car, lots of cars on the street, but not many people. You know, I, I kind of slow down myself to keep an eye on the person to see how it goes. And you know, he kind of puts his head back up, walks a few steps, stops again. You know, and I'm just like, I'm just amazed, you know, and, uh, you know, that this person, it, it feels, it looks like they're in such a bad condition, you know, that they're right on the edge of ODing and uh, they're so vulnerable, you know, to, to falling over, getting hit. Yeah, they're at the mercy of uh, the people around them, you know, and I start thinking about all this and then it, it hits me. It hits me how this actually happened to me right before I, I finally got into the clinic and got clean and sober. Um, and and I, I, I still, I didn't tell anybody this because it was so bizarre. I couldn't even understand how it happened myself. So I didn't, I never even told anybody else about this. So you got, you guys are the first ones hearing about this. I didn't even mention it when I first got into recovery. I've never told anybody this and I just kind of forgot about it until I saw this guy this morning. Okay. I was using, I was, I think it was, uh, a very strong painkiller. I'll just leave it at that. I don't want this video to get yellow lighted. I really would like 
people to see this video is of extremely strong painkillers in the summer of 2006 and I was by myself and I kind of had a routine then I would go uh, I'd actually go swimming which is insane in itself uh, in a lake you know with with this kind of this kind of buzz and uh, this was in the morning and I went for a walk I'd go for a walk sometimes and it was a long road that would come down behind a dam. It was about, probably about a mile and a half, two mile long road that would go around the, behind the dam and then down just a long, long downhill stretch, kind of mostly straight, a little winding. And I'd park my car about halfway on it and I'd, I'd go for a walk, you know, all buzzed. And I would do that some mornings and then I would go home and I, I think I'd get some McDonald's on the way home or some, I, you know, I, I had somewhat of a routine back when I was using so one morning, like I said, I'd usually walk back down to my car and get in my car and then go to McDonald's at 10 a.m. every morning. And uh, this, this particular morning, all of a sudden, I felt like I was falling over, like I was stumbling. And I stop and I, I look around and I had walked probably about a, uh, three quarters of a mile past my car. I couldn't even see my car. I had walked well past it, and I looked at my watch, and this is the, the freaky part. I had lost 40 minutes of my morning. It was, it was like 10.40 a.m. Like I said, I usually, I was due to, I was walking down, I would get back in my car at 10. So for 40 minutes, I walked past my car, and just, I, I don't know. To this day, I still don't know. And I, I couldn't believe this. You know, I was like, how could this happen? Like I said, all of a sudden, about 1040, I felt like I was stumbling. And that's what kind of brought me back, too. And I, was, I, I stumbled around. And I looked, at, you know, like I said, I was well, way past my car. And I was like, how could this be? How could I, you know, I, I could see, see people nodding out when they're sitting down. But I was walking. I was actually walking. You know, a dis not just standing still, but walking. And 40 for 40 minutes, you know, and I, I know all of a sudden it's 1040, you know, and the last time I looked at my, my watch, just like it felt like a minute ago, it was five before 10, you know, so I lost and it freaked, it freaked me out. I was like, how could this, and it, you know, I'm thinking who saw me? Did cars go by me? Did people see me? What did I look like? You know, I, I had to check my pockets to make sure, you know, I, I lost 45 minutes, you know, and I, I just, I, I was just, I couldn't believe that my body was just like in, in an automatic pilot. And just, you know, and I think because it was down, basically downhill and straight, that I just kind of unconsciously, you know, my brain was go, was out. I was probably right this close to ODing, you know? And then I thought about that too. I was like, if I hadn't been walking, because usually when you OD, your brain isn't getting enough oxygen. Your, your breathing slows down to the extent that your everything shuts down. And I started thinking about that. If I hadn't been on like automatic pilot going down a hill, just my feet just going one in front of the other automatically, that probably kept my, my oxygen going, my breathing going, you know? And you know, if I, if I hadn't been walking on that particular morning, I probably wouldn't even be, sit be sitting here right now, you know? And all this went through my head. And I was like, I couldn't even believe myself that this happened. That I just lost, you know, and it, it freaks me out. It scared me, like I said, because I couldn't, you know, that whole rest of that day, I didn't know who saw me. You know, I, I got a feeling like people were looking at me, like people had seen me. People, I don't know what went, 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 went on all around me for 45 minutes, you know, and it, it seriously freaked me out. And then add to that the fact that if I hadn't been in motion, I, I might not have even kept breathing. You know, and this is one of the things that's, it just, it scared me. It, and it, it took a lot to scare me at that point, you know, because I, I was at the point where I didn't think I'd ever get clean or sober. And I just, I was almost just hoping it would be all over. And this scared me. Uh, it was just bizarre, you know, and I never told anybody about it. I never talked about it because I couldn't even believe that it happened myself. I couldn't explain it, you know, how I would manage to walk unconscious for 45 minutes past my car. You know, until all of a sudden I started to fall over and, you know, I came to still standing up. And I saw this this morning. I saw this guy going down the sidewalk, 
And I was, you know, it all clicked. It's like, oh my God. You know, at first I'm like, I, I was concerned for that. I was like, how could, how could he do that? How could he be in that state? And then all of a sudden it all clicked. And I remember that day when I did this, I did the same thing even to even more of an extent. And for a, probably a longer amount of time and distance where I was just totally switched off out to lunch, probably barely, barely breathing. And it scared me. And um, I think it, it was that late that summer that I, I, I first time I saw treatment at the uh, the methadone clinic. And that's really that that truly I, that that saved my life. It really did. You know, I'll talk more about that in the future. But, you know, some people, a lot of people put down methadone program and everything. But it, it did save my life. It really did. It was the one thing that actually worked for me that made me feel that I could quit. And I'll talk about more, that more in the future. So, like I said, recovery is possible. Sooner or later, you're, you know, your luck runs out. It does. You know, you only get so many free passes. And uh, sooner or later, you know, your luck runs out. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be back later with another video. You guys have a good Tuesday.